we said, well, hey, we could probably make a fractional order inductor. It seems like it should exist. Um, now, on their diagram, the resistor was a corner, and on mine it's the center. But to me, and I, I won't claim to finish this uh, yet, this is, this is my summer plan, but to me, memristance probably happens out here. In fact, it might be this whole domain that's not this number line. It might be either side of this. Um, so we could probably establish something on this line, and then we could have another hard set of just singular values to compare things. Or we could combine them, and who knows what we'd get. And the odds are good that if this is true, we're seeing effects from both remembrance and fragments at the same time. I don't know. Um, so, with that in mind, uh, I'd like to present this uh, fractional <coughs> inductor, and I've made a circuit diagram. Um, with apologies to the English language, I don't like the word fractductor, but uh, that's what it is. Um, ideally, these devices have internal fractional magnetic flux linkage, which means they have a power law inductive response. Um, they are kind of the opposite, if you will, of the fractional capacitor. Um, I think the idealist uh, design would probably be some kind of jungle of carbon nanotubes, which are extremely efficient and could generate a lot of magnetic flux in a tight amount of space, mm -hmm. etc. Um, but they would perform this basic function. Yeah. Um, now, I've, I've tried to make these. Um, this is from a paper that I'm writing. Um, I have some of this magnetic real logical fluid. It is a uh, liquid magnet, powdered liquid magnet stuff. Uh, so I biased it with two magnets, and this just, just happened because I was playing around. But basically, I have an input coil, some fluid, and an output coil, and then an amplifier so I can see the effect. Um, the idea here is that an AC signal comes in and polarizes the fluid in some way, creating a coherent magnetic field. And then, because the fluid is sort of fluidic, the magnetic field decays, hopefully in some sort of power law way, and then we see a magnetic field here that has our mem memory response. Um, this is my Bode plot, uh, goo experiment number three. Oh, um, hey Shyok, could you get that box that's behind you? It's got my notebook and some other stuff. I actually brought some, <coughs> some, some samples. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, there is, thank you, there's one notebook, one math notebook, uh, so. Since you're new here, I'm going to see this is the fact that that is. Um, so I don't know if any of you guys were in school when you made goo in grade school. Um, I actually didn't go to grade school, so I just made it go on my own, but uh, it's 50% Elmer's glue, 50% water, and then you mix in borax, which has some active element that aligns the polyvinyl alcohol chains, and makes slime. And since the slime is non-Newtonian, my idea was adding iron powder to the slime would allow us to get this sort of loose linkage of iron pointing. Um, but what I wanted to show is this. This is the response. I have a digital signal analyzer downstairs and an amplifier hooked to this. And the slope of this line is about 13 to 15 dB per decade. So it's not 20 like an ideal inductor. And it's not 10 like you might think, you know, a half order inductor. It's a little more than half. But the phase is fairly constant for this first little bit. Um, and this is what we'd be looking for. It kind of decays here. Um, so, if you cut out this little chunk, I believe that I've actually made a fractional inductor. I believe I have. It's more like a transmitter, <clears throat> but I think the concept is good. Okay, this is a band limited. Uh, if you look at this, this reference. Yeah. It's about how many decades? Well, it works for about one decade at this point. Uh, almost one decade. But, it's $30 enough. with this guy. Um, so that's, all I really wanted to show you at this point, um, so I've told you about fractors, memristors, and how I believe there's a link, and out of this study, the fractductor has come. 
Um, I don't know what exactly I've made. I've succeeded in doing something. But if you compare the Bode plots, um, okay, so you see that the phase kind of decays here, and then this is going up. Remember, uh, this is the fractional capacitor, which has the opposite slope. And the phase is kind of increasing, so I believe I've actually sort of, I believe I've done it. So uh, that is the end of my short presentation. So, All right, thank you. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> well, it's great. I can tell and did a lot of experiments and explored a lot of things. So. Nice. Any other questions for Cal? Any questions? What are the uh, applications for these uh, things? Um. Yeah, that's. An excellent question because the, the motivation for even doing this is because we couldn't really control the phase angle of diffractors. Um, the idea, at least in my mind, is that by making finer iron particles or some kind of easily variable part of the recipe, we could actually adjust the phase angle um, and therefore implement the fractional calculus stuff that we're talking about much easier. Um, so really this is more about can we make something that actually works and this is a better way to do it.